Bounce King. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 79 of the Fresh Mondays podcast with your hosts Diana and Marley. This is the quarantine edition, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> quarantine, quarantine. I'm trying to read the new Tory Lanes out here. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? The one on IG Live with Megan? The, his IG Live, his quarantine, quarantine radio. He just be mm. blasting it. Um, yeah, we're still here, guys. In the same place you found us last week. You know, getting our lives, I guess, to the new normal of what it is. This is not the new normal. This is just what's going on right now. We can't, we cannot, we cannot accept this to be the new normal. Absolutely not. <laughs> She's like, I'm not letting this happen to us. No, it's not just not. It. Like, we, we can't allow it as a society of people. Like, this is not, this is not normal. So, no. No, the, the, the work from home thing is something that we can, I guess, get used to in a sense to adding and adapting more to our work lifestyle because I've always enjoyed selecting to be able to work from home, mm-hmm. right? Like I go into the office for a couple of days, go home and work, you know, the next two or three days I'd work from home. The option that, is nice. That flexibility is nice. And I think that shows you that corporate America needs to really start leaning towards that, that flexibility. In, in my opinion, I think that's a real benefit uh, in helping out your, 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 what's it called? Employee, you know what I mean? Like work life balance? Work life balance, satisfa- satisfaction, and, and the, as an employee and being part of a company, those kind of things. I mean, so you, I, so you think it's an advantage in general to be able to work from home? You think it's a perk? You think it's a positive? It is a complete positive. It is a perk. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed it in all the past companies that I've worked with. It right. is an absolute plus mm-hmm. that that is included in the, the the culture of the company. I get it. And I think that I, what I like about that option as an employee is, I guess what I look at it is like, thank you for being considerate enough to know that I'm still responsible enough to do my job. But at times I do need the opportunity to be able to do it from a different location so that I can not miss out on anything for you. So you see what I'm saying? So like, I can see how that's really dope. And I agree with you Mm -hmm. in that essence. Yeah. It's, it's, it's trust. It's trust within your employer, your has a trust in you and they're not micromanaging you almost if they provide you that little space, that opportunity to do that. Yeah. However, I am not going to take away from the workplace environment the reason i say that is because now that i am working from home it it makes me appreciate the workplace environment much more Mm -hmm. i think that that's been my learning lesson for me because it's kind of like you you feed off of human interaction at the end of the day and it's Mm -hmm. like we're still we're still human beings you know what i mean like this computer shit can only take you so far you need to be around other people oh absolutely i feel like this has taught us this this quarantine has taught us that you see what i'm saying so it's like it is nice to have an office setting and to have a coworker and to like have the office drama and the office little (laughs) gossip, you know, little things that come with the job, but it's still kind of entertaining and you don't realize how entertaining it is until it's really taken away from you. So I think that even though it is nice to work from home, I think being able to go to work is a lot more entertaining than I realized. Like, honestly. Yeah. Like you, you, you didn't realize how much walking into that office and like doing your routine of when you walk into work, it has a big effect of how you work and how you function and how yeah. productive you are. Right. And I think sometimes, of course, depending on what you do for a living, because everybody's yeah, work is environment all, is right. completely different. This is all in the, all different scopes. But I can see how you can be more productive when you're around others that are working because we are, you know, most people are creatures of, of their environment. So it's like if your whole environment is grinding, the likelihood of you bullshitting is probably a little lower Right. If you were like home and no one's watching, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is true. And my Google searches remain the same. If I was at work at the office or here, where you just think of a thought and be like, let me Google this. And you get kind of in right. deep at work. But um, yeah, like you're right. And this is um, appreciative of your coworkers, of who you work for, what you do for a living, if it's applicable outside of a workspace, those kind of things. It's definitely sure. that. It's definitely a new balance of life. Yes. And I feel like also, I think that we are all maybe developing better skills of being self-sufficient. I think this is what this is teaching us too. When you have to work from home, you can't really like, you have to figure things out for yourself sometimes. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like this is kind of a good way to refresh and sharpen some of the areas that you may have been not 
doing your best at, I think that this exposes that. And I feel like that could be a positive when it's like, oh, right, when I go back to work, I know my areas of opportunity because you can kind of like self-diagnose because mm-hmm. now like you're literally running your own ship. So I feel like for people who are not used to that, I think that this is a good little eye opener. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what are some new fun facts or thoughts on Corona's since the last time we spoke that you have? I know we both had very uh, a mix of thought processes on both sides, like on both spectrums. We both had double spectrums on this whole situation. What are your uh, current thoughts of the situation? Um, okay, I, I don't know if I should get deep or if I should just like <laughs> get real. I don't even know what to tell you because this whole experience, first of all, what is this? Uh, day 11, 9, 10? I don't know. I think Quarantine. everyone's on, on different days. That's my problem. Mm-hmm. That's one part. <laughs> we don't have to go there, but everyone's on different days. I, I, started, I would say I'm at least at 10, for sure. At least 10. I might be 13. I'm, okay, then I might I, be higher because we started a little while ago. Yeah, I was around the 10th, 11th, no, the 12th of March was my last day physically at work. So that's when that started for me. Oh, Friday the 13th is when we yes. started. We made like a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever since that day, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a it's minute. It's been a minute. Um, okay, my update. I was watching another deep dive on <laughs> the conspiracy of coronavirus. And um, the deep dive was that this virus supposedly started in the US and then got planted into like being blamed on the Chinese or whatever that kind of even gave me another layer of what's really going on. I guess that's really my question. I'm not stating that it's not super scary. The media is super scary. My parents are freaking the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like family members in New York are being impacted. You know, my boyfriend's uncle has been diagnosed and is in the hospital. So like, you know, real things are happening. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, it's scary, but it's like, it still doesn't take away the fact that I don't know if this is something that naturally just happened. I don't know if that's really what's going on. And it's like, I keep on watching all these history documentaries because I'm kind of a nerd and I like history. So like, it's not only because of the Corona, I just like stuff like that. So it's like, I'm watching stuff like this and I'm like, yo, this shit is like clockwork happening every hundred years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, how can I not sit here and say, yo, this is some real behind the scenes, dirty ass shit to do to fucking human beings. Like I really feel that way. It was funny you said every hundred years because I sat there one day and I was like, are we at the hundred years of the last one? Like you start like your minds are spinning. Like, what is this? Because we have not experienced anything right. unlike this. Um, I like your approach. I like your thought process. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I don't fully disagree. You know, right. like, I think it's just, it's one of the many bullet points of thoughts that I think we all have because essentially we aren't really big. Sorry. I'm going to pause. Can you hear that? Is that your, where you are? Is that like somebody selling platanos outside? That sounds like some DR shit. Is that? <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> no, then it's something else that I'm hearing here. Because I was like, what is that? No, it's no, like no. That's, on a microphone. No, that, that, that's him. He's talking. That's my aunt's <laughs> husband. <clears throat> We've been trapped here for weeks. Cause my aunt's in Vegas, and so he's here. That's that's him talking. Anyways, okay, sorry. And point. Um, I think we all have those bullet points and those thought processes. I here's my thought, or here's one of my thoughts. Right. Um, there's a lot of people testing positive for this virus, and I, needless to say, I'm not saying that it's a real and tr- not true. I'm not saying these people are not sick. I feel because there's a lot of asymptomatics. I th- because there's a lot, the time frame of how long you're sick or how long you've been sick or how long it takes to get sick, whatever that case is. I think the testing, something is not correct. I think it may be that uh, detecting something else or other, or maybe incorrectly, because I feel like there's more, is, does that make sense? Like this testing, we're moving so fast, we're doing, you know how you never get the first iPhone? Because right. that first iPhone, that first right. day, or my dad always told so me, you, you never like buy the a, first model of the it's, car. It's like a glitch, you believe, in the system. Yes, there's, there's, there's something, I don't fully believe 
in that the testing is 100%. Because we're talking about, when you say those asymptomatics, like nothing, and those people are just carrying that virus, that's a scary thought. But how factual is that? But there's so many other viruses that that is a fact, that there's people that carry and don't get affected, but they can infect others. That has always been with every virus. It's like, I'm not trying to downplay the severity of what's going on. on the Absolutely. Planet. No, of course. I understand that this is a, a, a moment in history and we're part of it. So and our grandkids, just like the in means the be showing, books. right. The means be showing us talking to the future generations. Like, yeah, minutes used to end at nine. You know, <laughs> shit, that's funny. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like we have if you think about it, us eighties kids have lived the <laughs> most shit you can ever imagine. I just want to yes. make this clear. The transition has been very real. If you were born in the eighties, there's something of like you we have seen a freaking reality star become a president. And his you know what I mean? Like these layers that we've seen a black president. We have seen a president who had sex in the, like, you just think about all these things. We've seen several wars. I mean, we, we used to say I typing was, class. Yeah, you feel we me? And then typing class, man. Right, we took typing like classes. Our parents did. <laughs> and now we literally have, like, touch screens that you touch into the fucking walls of your house. You see what I mean? Like, we have literally gone a very wide We wide had to spectrum. dial phone numbers before yeah. it was the, the area code. No. Yeah, before area code and then with area code when that was implemented. I remember that day. And we had grandparents that we had, we had conversations with that came from a time that was completely different than ours, which is still an advantage that we have because we heard of history before our time because those people were still functioning and still in their 60s. You know what I mean? So it's like... The time, yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, and I had a great grandmother. I was like, yo, she never even saw a microwave. <laughs> and there's a microwave in front of her. You're right. Like, we've lived through so many stages of this and so witnessing and being a part of this history right it's just so interesting it's so you wonder how it's going to impact that future how right. is this going to take an impact on us because 9 11 took an impact on us everything completely shifted everything i mean y2k us. was something you know what i mean like there was a lot of things that happened in our time you feel me there was a lot of things that we were expecting to happen in 2020. Ever since we were kids, they said 2020 was going to be the turn of everything. Forget a century. It was going to change everything. We thought we was and, flying in our cars. But this change is coming in a little rough. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is a rough hard. way. But the point is that something had to change. And sometimes we kind of forget that this was the year that things were supposed to really shift. And now they're shifting. And everybody's having a really fucking hard time with it. And we weren't fucking prepared. And that's, we were not, pre we knew a shift was coming where we have, uh, and those who, those of you who are more um, empathic, more of you who can feel more, who have, you know, a sense of, of connection to, to other ways and, and, you know, thought processes and beliefs and spirits, you know, a shift was going to happen and it's bound to happen. But this country, us as people, we're not prepared for the shift and how hard it hit us. I think it just really just, it crashed into us. Right. I'm going to hit you with one super hard right now. I'm going to hit you with the deep level, Diana, really, how she be thinking in her mind. <laughs> um, I feel like this is a preparation for what's really going to come. Because in my opinion, I think that they always introduce change to us very slowly just to kind of test it out. It's kind of like a beta test. It's kind of like a, let's see what happens when we put them in these situations. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? conveniently i think it's better for any government for people to be more inside their homes and for people to kind of mm. order more shit online and cater to that business cater more to artificial in intelligence and the people who do physically work are people who do factory work so there really isn't a middle class like i really believe that that is the ideal setup for any government that wants to rule everything so, so removing that, that middle class i think we're, we're training our middle class on how it is that you survive from being at home and not going outside because Got at it. the end of the day what are the movies that has shown us from the future? Oh, in the future, the air is going to be so polluted, we can't even step outside. Yeah. What have we learned about the future? That there's going to be so much crime and like, and like heinous behaviors within the human society because if you can't pay yourself into something that's better, that you're going to live in a really shitty circumstance because there's so much garbage and pollution in the planet. Mm -hmm. Like they've been telling us this shit for years. Yeah. So how are we not supposed to sometimes speculate is it possible that that may happen and what if this is a training for that and i know i'm going really like super <laughs> i get it but it's like i i think like that sometimes i'm like how can we not 
believe that they possibly shape the way the future is. Like they, they, they mold us to be citizens to the reality. Yeah. And they've been doing that since the very beginning. I think your points are valid and there's no shame or should be scariness of thinking in that way because we should think in all ways possible because that prepares us for whatever ways it is going to be. This is the result of, right? Or this is this results at the end of this or whatever this is. That's fine, I think, to think in multiple factors and multiple scenarios of how this occurred or how this came out. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm trying to reorganize this room to make me happier. Right. I'm trying and, to... And you know, that's a lovely transition because we're going to talk about maybe some new habits and positive things that people are implementing with the extra free time at home. So, well, before we go there, I just noticed I spend more money at the grocery store right now. Okay. I'm not going again for the hundredth time. And that's the habit that I have created and I need to get out of it. That's I have, a bad habit. No, I've created bad habits too, girl. We could go down that line too. We, <laughs> that is, <laughs> because I've realized I'm going more often. Now, I always was a person who liked when I, especially when I'm by myself, lived by myself, I would go to the grocery store maybe every three days because I wouldn't buy so much, things go bad, blah, blah, blah. And I knew what I was cooking and I kind of worked that way. Right now, I find myself going almost every other day and it's like, it's adding it up. It is something to do, honey. That's the only place we can go. That is exactly. true. That is Target. Something- Thank God for Target. There's something to do. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I have a task for the day. Let me walk to the store. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it, it becomes like an event. I feel like I live like in the middle of like middle of nowhere, USA, you know, where people have like a store 45 minutes away and like, that's the trip. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Going into town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into town. Um, so what other habits am I creating? Good or bad? Um, a good one that I've realized that I need to do more often is shower right away when I wake up before working. Okay. Just like if I was showering to go to work. Right. Right. I've realized if I don't shower, eat my breakfast and just go to start to work at my desk, I'll be sitting there forever all day. Right. And it'd be like, well, damn, I ain't shower all day. I'd rather now shower in the morning so that I'm refreshed, ready to set and then sit down. I got it. Because they don't really deserve 30 more minutes extra of me in the morning, right? Like, that's my 30 minutes I should be utilizing for me before sitting down and getting ready. Okay. So that's a I habit I'm, I'm, uh, I'm creating in that sense. What about you? I, um, uh, I'm a big fan of, of morning showers, so I get that. Um, mm-hmm. Now, as far as um, uh, I, I, I have created... I mean, I have, I've had a a ritual for quite some time, which is, you know, you get up, you do a certain thing in the morning, you take a shower, you get ready, you go to work. So it's like, that's your lifestyle. So I Mm -hmm. still wake up early. I still, you know, my body wakes up. It's like, thank God I haven't lost that because I definitely don't want to ruin that. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because it took me a long time to get to the point that getting up early became feeling more natural. Yes. And it's like now like there's not that many rules and there's really isn't much options. Like it's very easy to kind of push it to the limit and literally wake up 10 minutes before you shift and sign on. You know what I yeah, mean? Absolutely. I get like it. It, it's becoming very easy to do that. And it's like, you know, I'm the type of person that I was getting up every single day, like clockwork at 630 in the morning. And I didn't start my shift until nine. So it's like, I had my mornings, I had my ritual, I did what I did. And it's like, now it's like, fuck, like there's no point of me getting up that early. So it's like, I try to kind of just look at it in the same mindset, like I get up. um, I know that the first thing I have to do is uh, pull out the yoga mat, because if I don't do that, I'm not going to do the yoga. But now that I have the yoga mat, I've already committed. I bought my yoga mat too. And one, one dumbbell. That's all they had. I really need a a weight. We don't have any weights. It's like tragic. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, so anyway, the point is that I just kind of made it a ritual. That's my advice for creating a good habit for this whole thing. Even though you're off and you're not going anywhere, like make it something that's like what you have to do every day. Like at the end of the day, we're still creatures of habit. And like, if you make something a habit, that's when it becomes a lifestyle. So it's like, I, I get up, I pull out my yoga mat. And then after I do that and I do my yoga, I put a pot of coffee, I jump in the shower, come out. By that time, I'm ready to start my day. And like me doing that has created a lot more peace in my mind because now I have like some type of a step one, step two, step three. Everybody's not like that, but I am. Like I need, I need that kind of discipline. 
Yeah. And I'm trying to create that discipline because yeah. I can find myself and I know myself enough to be like, ah, I'm rolling over at 810, put this in, put my finger on the touchpad. <laughs> I'm right. present. The light is green, right. but I'm still in this bed. And so I'm creating that. I bought my yoga mat because I was going to the gym in the evenings, but then I realized, okay, let's transition this into the home and kind of building that at home situation for me. Um, I bought the yoga mat. Um, I have uh, my friend Jasmine Roche hosts her yoga classes online, signing up for things like that. So kind of implementing a lot of this into it. Right. Um, so that's definitely, and of course, during this time frame, hopefully these habits are plugged in for future. Even yeah, when I actually, speaking changes. of, I was reading an article. Let me see if I can find it. It was on the New York Times and it was about, uh, about creating uh, good habits because mm-hmm. you know I just wanted to get a little bit of knowledge and I thought maybe I can share and it was stating something really interesting about how when you actually select something that you want to accomplish and you want to make it part of your lifestyle is that you have to start small mm-hmm. and like that was the first message that it gave you because it's like if you make something so grandiose because I know we've all been guilty of that we're like I'm gonna write a fucking book you know what I'm saying and it's like <laughs> I'm gonna, this time. Time. <laughs> I'm gonna use this time yeah like i rem- uh on twitter they were saying you know uh use your know, the 1200 dollars that you're getting to start a business people are like bitch a, a business <laughs> that 1200 dollars comes in handy for something else and it's true it we is to pay this internet bill motherfucker <laughs> we need it obviously <laughs> like it is for something that would start my business i'm working <laughs> like what is with you so I found that funny and hilarious. And then there's some, you have to re- remember that other people have different strands and levels of creativeness, right. of structure, of how they can do things, how can they get execute. So don't pressure that kind of shit on everyone. Absolutely. It's not for everybody. Absolutely. Right? And We're then, on different paces. Absolutely. So that's why you got to start small. And the second step is uh, to do it every day. So uh, researchers and studies have proven that habits are created by you know how frequently you do it mm-hmm. it's like if you say i'm gonna drink water you make sure you drink water every single time you have a meal you're automatically at least getting three cups of water in you know what i mean so it's like yeah. just even if it's small like you know try so um the next one is make it easy so that that's perfect what you and i were just saying like you have to do something that's attainable yeah if you don't it doesn't have to be jumping off of the roof just stretch your ass on the yoga mat it's one exactly. Start. I love that. And also reward yourself. It's important to make it part of the habit for the formation of the habit. Um, when you when we brush our teeth, we reward ourselves immediately with minty, fresh taste in our mouths, which is really cool. I never even thought of that. Oh, and you're right. some rewards, you know, could be like a physical change, like from exercise, or you kind of work on your punctuality because you become more, you know, self sufficient with your time. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. just reward yourself and say, "Hey, I did well." And kind of encourage yourself, like, you know, you know how they say you have to reward good behavior, like give yourself a reward for the good behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's just like some really easy, quick steps. You know, the whole article is pretty cool. It's on the New York Times, but it's just like, those were the standouts to me because it's like, you have to just be realistic, you know? Yeah. 100%. Like, I know that lately I've been doing a lot of the, what am I going to keep? Do I really need this? I want to kind of like Ooh, redecorate the, Marie, the house. The Marie Como, whatever that lady's name is. Lady's name is on Netflix. Have you seen that one? The little Asian no, lady. No, is she like a declutterer type of person? Yes, but she's like small and dainty and doesn't speak English, but she could set your house up straight up and knead it out. But it's very emotional of oh, okay. what you're keeping, what you're staying. Like, do you need and keep? Just watch that one. That's a good one. Isn't hoarding an emotional imbalance of some kind when you're a hoarder? I believe so. She doesn't I go that so, deep. Yeah. But no, I believe but it's so. like, no, I mean, I'm not like a diagnosing someone. I'm just saying like a kind of, um, when you can't let go of things, it's because of something. It's not because you, yeah. you're, you know, anyway. Anyway, point is that um, that's something I've been doing. And it's kind of like um, really freeing when you like throw things away and like get rid of stuff that is just taking the space in the closet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's been a really positive from this for me i've had those moments i like that um for me yeah the yoga mat is mostly that creating that habit that making sure i'm showering 
right away. That changes your whole demeanor of everything. Um, even just trying new things. Like I have new products for my hair and I'm like, oh, I'm going to try these. Like yeah. that kind of things bring me joy because I'm going to be at home. So I'm going to be playing with that. Like, you know, just bringing in things that make me feel better and happy. Another good thing is, I know this is going to sound silly. I change my clothes every day. And I don't, yeah. and I, and I feel like that might sound simple to some because of the way we have been raised. Some people are raised to like, you know, as don't soon waste as you clothes. wear it, it's dirty. Mm-hmm. And there's some people that believe in one or two wears for everything you have. Like it mm-hmm. just all depends on your own upbringing. So yeah. I'm not to saying anything is right or wrong. I just know everybody's different. Mm-hmm. But for me, I, um, I've noticed that I feel better when I change my outfit even if it's just like a house outfit you see what i'm saying i feel you i have that yeah like i wear like this t-shirt today with like the house shorts Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but then i won't wear this for like five days in a row you know what i mean like that shit can become depressing so it's like you have to change your clothes and you have to make an effort to like you know wear fresh clothes and wash your clothes and wash your sheets and do stuff like that I know that sounds really simple, but when you're in a funk, people don't pay attention to those type of things. And that type of stuff brings you down. Yes. And that, that, that can lead to a deep hole mm-hmm. if you're not, you know, pushing up. I will say I officially have clothes that I go outside for only during this coronavirus. So I call them Corona clothes because them sweats <laughs> and these t-shirts, like certain things, like, but like, I'm not, you know, you try not to stick to things or like, you know, yeah. nothing that's going to be, you know, to whatever. I do have that, but yeah, that's a good idea. Continually changing your clothes when you're in the house, because I know I love a house dress all day, and I work in this house dress right. <laughs> throughout the week, which is good. But then for ladies, for those of you who are listening, you know how it is when you wear the pajama pants or your stretchy pants or your stretchy dress, you don't notice how much weight you're gaining mm. because you're in all this loose, comfortable clothing. Mm. But then when the shit is over and you put on your fucking jeans, and you're like, whoa. I can't even zip these bitches up. Like, this is what you have to say. Hey, self, stop putting on the biggest shirt you own in the house with straight underwear. Because, bitch, you know I'm right. Okay. (laughs) You, (laughs) girl, you will blow up. You know what I mean? Like, you have to to create this type of discipline to kind of keep yourself in check. I 100% agree. I completely didn't even think about that. You're right. You're right. Them sweatpants will fill in mm-hmm. very easily. Very easily. Um, things that also have been keeping me a little bit happy throughout this whole dilemma of things that it's ha- going on. IG entertainment. Have you been into the IG lives? The notifications are constantly coming. I've been doing a little bit of a social media cleanse. I'm not even going to lie. Oh, tell us. A little bit. A little bit. Um, um, I am just, a lot of times, okay, let me say it like this. I like certain people I follow that are my friends. I yes. understand their sense of humor. I like what they're saying. That shit is entertaining. Cool. But beyond that, like, I don't know. Like, like I'm not really, I want to be zen right now. And, and shit is just, like, not zen. So it's I'm, not like, scrolling I'm, not, and I'm not scrolling like I used to. I probably good. Started, I'm, I think I that's a good thing. I've completely stopped scrolling and probably do story just probably a couple minutes and get bored pretty quickly. I, I don't know. I feel like I've pulled back a bit from being really into it because I my experience was just like none of this is really doing anything productive for my day. I don't mm-hmm. know. That was just me. No, of course. That was me. That was me. But yeah. Absolute sense. There are though, um, like last night was a Saturday night and my ass was like, well, we can't do nothing. Go nowhere. Right. And I'm going to tune into this uh, battle, music battles that are happening. I'm a lover of music. So right. anything music related, I'm in it. Yesterday, there was um, Sean Garrett, the music writers battle, which was Sean Garrett and The Dream were going back and forth on music. And what I've realized is IG, Instagram and IG Live reminds you everyone is stuck in their home, no matter how rich or poor they are. <laughs> and that everyone is currently a hot mess with the situation. Right. That is just a Which I can appreciate. Which I can right. appreciate. And mm-hmm. then it starts to show you these people's actual, actual, like, lives and how they are and their home kind of structure. Does that make sense? Like, the of person course. that they are as a person, not as an artist, as an entertainer. 
they become oh, real the persona. normal. Yeah, right, yes, right. they become real normal. Um, so those are the kind of things I've been entertaining myself with. Timberland and Swiss Beats had a back and forth music battle. So you kind of like, and the comments is the best part because everyone's talking trash in the comments or making right. funny jokes. It's like being in like an AOL chat room once again. It gives that's you pretty that. That's pretty awesome. Especially when you're talking about that level of talent. That's pretty amazing. Right. And especially if you're talking, yeah, you're talking about things that you really love, enjoy, and you're well-versed in, in a way. Right. And when the people are making comments and that shit cracks you up because you get the joke at the same time, you know, it's really AOL chat room vibes, fun stuff. So I've been keeping entertained with the ones that I like, with the people that I like. That's cool. dope. Then I can spend like about an hour, two hours in there, like, wow, this is really play. Even just playing in the background, it's. Playing. Who do you recommend to like kind of follow on this? Each, ba- each battle is different, but I've enjoyed Tory Lanez. Uh, IG has been hilarious. Um, yes, there's sometimes there's some girls twerking. Meg The Stallion was twerking on there recently, but his commentary is what makes it hilarious. His action is funny. Um, I've liked a lot of. Um, live ig lives from a lot of um what would you say like yoga instructors or like spiritual guidance ones um mariah carey was on so i was like oh who when do you actually see mariah carey at home well she's still in her heels and her gown and all that stuff of course but like mm-hmm. little things like that but like oh they're actually on um and like the- i'm like wow like your makeup artist is not under quarantine right right <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right hers is not <laughs> um and i've loved the djs the dj so like um, DJ Nice was a nice want party, and I had a friend from Florida, DJ Dunhot. He was DJing, and the music was great. And you just connected to your boombox or your Bluetooth, and you know you just rock out in the house. You don't even have to watch it. It's just right. good live music happening. That's Quest a love. great recommendation. Quest Love is fantastic. That's another one. Nice. You know what's funny? Speaking of music, recently. I had a client at my job, be a customer, whatever you want to call him, um, made a comment about my name, which is very common because um, the my name is one of those names that is very known. However, you don't know many people with the name. I don't know how to explain it. So it's like being that my name is Diana, everybody's always like, oh, okay, that's a common name. However, I don't really know many girls named Diana. Like, yeah. it's like you either, you know, you know, like one or two yeah. But it's not, you know what I mean? It's like a Stephanie or Jessica or whatever. I think you're so, the only Diana I know. Right. But yet, you know, it's not an uncommon name. No, it's a regular. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a regular a, name, but it's not something name. that you hear. It's not, it's like, everybody's like allotted one Diana a lifetime. I don't know. Yeah. So it's <laughs> that type of thing. So people always comment on it. Every job I've ever had, people always say something about my name. So the demographic of people that I work with now are much older. And, um... Every time I say my name, they're like, oh my God, like that song, like that song, like that song. So I finally look it up and uh, it's a song from the 1950s by an artist called uh, Paul um, Anka. I think his name is Paul Anka, something like that. Mm. So whatever. So this is a song, it's gorgeous, beautiful. So that then led into a playlist of songs from the 50s. Oh my God, Marley, I'm in love. (laughs) I'm in love. It's like the most beautiful lyrics, the most romantic feelings. Like now I understand when you speak to people, I have, you know, I have customers and clients that they, they speak to me and they've been married for 65 years. Wow. And you're just like, wow, get out of here. You, and you hear them talk about their wife, like this woman is the moon and the stars. And then wow. you're like, get out of here. And then I listen to the music that they listened to when they were like dating. And I'm like, this is why you guys have such beautiful relationships. <laughs> like, the music is beautiful. Like, it's just like the most... <laughs> They were listening to Don't Stop, Pop That. <laughs> Not at all. It was just like what it was. I don't know. I feel like I've always had an affinity to that era that, in music. Yeah. I've always oh, found yeah. it to be very beautiful. I think that even the the chivalry was very beautiful at that time. You know what I mean? So I just, I like that that time. In, I want to look in it history. up now. Did you make an Apple playlist or a Spotify one? It's a YouTube playlist for my like work YouTube. So okay. I listen to what I'm working. I think it's very beautiful. And I think it's, I don't know, it's like, it's like a better time in life <laughs> when, when people used to like give you a pin and you were like the football player's girlfriend. You know what I mean? Like, yes, 
Mm-hmm. Yes, that sounds like very Pleasantville almost. Exactly, exactly. Very. That's cute. I love that. I love old school music. I'm more of a disco person, oddly enough. Really? And I think it's because my mom has always been very uh, disco-y, um, 60s, 80s. She's very into that kind of vibe mm-hmm. always. So I love disco, but I can relate to what you're saying because the music is just so different. You'd be like, what happened here? So beautiful, like, so pretty, so in love. And you're that's like, oh, awesome. And, I, and I'm like, a, well, that's one thing people may not know about me. I am a huge softy. Like I am a romantic. I'm a softy. I like love the moments in life. Like I'm just one of those people. So it's like to <laughs> me, I'm like, oh my God, how beautiful. So it's like, that is a part of me that I only share with special, you know, relationships. Yeah. So it's like, I just love when a person can express that in a song. It's nice. That's awesome. I love, that's a beautiful story. <laughs> I, I definitely want to hear it now. No, because I want to yeah. hear the song now. Like I, I just looked it up and I'm like, I have it saved. So I want to hear what this is about. Awesome. Okay, good. I was going to send this to you. We got it. Yeah. It's like old school, old school. Yeah. <laughs> Very like, oh, like I can see like a boy, yeah. band, like, like a whole Temptations and it's like. A yeah, choir exactly. Kind of yes. Absolutely yeah. love it. Um, any movie or Netflix recommendations? I have one or two. Show me, tell me. So this is very Dawson's Creek, the OC, but to now. It's called All American. Oh, I saw a little preview. Okay. okay. Tell us about it. It's if good. You're, if you're into like the OC, Dawson's oh, Creek. Oh, I love Dawson's Creek. You know I love music. No, Creek. I love, <laughs> can you find Dawson's Creek, like the whole thing? anywhere I, I, they give it on the w no on the paramount channel have you ever heard of that channel yeah but do they have it on on streaming services anywhere i'm not sure i'm not sure okay i gotta i'm gonna i want to watch from the beginning to end and decide if i'm pacey or dawson i need to read you know what when you watch it now as an adult you're gonna be like yo this is some dramatic shit for 15 year old <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like god damn like relax but yeah Calm your ass down. There's other p- bitches out there. Like, go find something else. I want to just, you know, decide for myself on that. Um, so this is called All American. Season two came out. It is a regular running show on the CW. But I don't watch regular basic cable all the time. Mm-hmm. Only when, like, for certain things. So all of season two is now officially up on this, on Netflix. So season one was great. Season two was really well. Um, like a football Friday Night Lights ish kind of vibe. I've never watched Friday Night Lights, but I know the idea. So that's a good one. Um, also, Little Fires Everywhere on Hulu is a great mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. I started watching it. I love Reese Witherspoon with everything in my heart. She's it's fucking good she's though. She's good though. And in, um, in everything she's, she's in, she's good. She's one hundred. Ever since Cruel Intentions, you already know. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm ready to watch that movie again. Every time I see Reese with this room's face, put Cruel Intentions right back on. And you know, those kind of movies change as you become an adult as well, like you were saying, mm-hmm. where you'd be like, oh, I didn't catch on to that when I watched this at 14. Right. Like, this is a real adult content happening. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and I'm watching a movie called Uncork on Netflix as well. Okay. It's about a guy who wants to become a sommelier. So that's interesting. Interesting. And, you know, sommeliers is like very rare. It's very difficult, very hard to become one. So I thought that was like, that's a great movie so far. I'm enjoying that. Okay. What do you have going on? Uh, Okay, I can do movies. Um, I saw a movie. It was called Hector and the Search for Happiness. Oh, what's that about? It's really good. It's about a psychiatrist. Okay. uh, It lives in um, Switzerland, I think. But he's a really funny comedic actor. So he does a good job at being funny, dramatic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anyway, he's he's a psychiatrist and he's kind of like in a funk in life. And he needs to kind of reassess. Mm -hmm. So he decides to go on like world travels to kind of understand the true meaning of happiness. So Mm -hmm. it's really funny. Yeah, it's a smart funny, you know? I like I like the sound of that. By the way, once this is over, we're buying ten dollar flights to anywhere. <laughs> Just I, don't I, mean. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I have, flight, I have like a I have an obscene flight credit right now because I was supposed to be in Vegas this weekend and like they gave me all the money and a credit for taking the money. It was just like all this money. I'm like, yo, we better be able to fly by December because that's when they let's not even talk oh about it. God. Anyway. 
Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Anyway, so um, the thing, one of the things I like about the most about the movie is for those of you who know me, I'm a sucker for quotes and I'm a sucker for like life mantras. So mm-hmm. one of the things that happens on this movie is that they do a lot of that, like through a lesson, he writes a quote of the lesson that he learned. Like, I like so, this. Yeah, Send me this. Let me tell you a quote that really I loved. It's called, it's, it states, sometimes happiness is not knowing the whole story. Oh, that hit me mm-hmm. right in the gut. That's a you know good that? one. That's a gem. That's a nice one. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's so, like, listen, we're like reflecting, I'm reflecting on it right now because that is real. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's a good one. Noted. Yes. <laughs> Hector and, and the what? Hector and the search for happiness. Got it. Now, another one that really resonated for me was many people see happiness only in their future. Your Netflix recommendation is different when you log in. <laughs> this isn't on Netflix. This isn't on Netflix. No. <laughs> Mine's is like cooking, baking, <laughs> uh, teenage dramas, comedies. Yours is like, here's a search of happiness. <laughs> here's how to, like, yours is different, different. What's this I'll on? I'll be deep. Like, you know, I, this is one thing I learned about this quarantine. I'm a deep ass person. <laughs> like, this shit is a lot. Like, I'm I deep, but I can't. Others. I'm, <laughs> I'm deep, but I got to be taken out of it, which is why teenage dramas entertain me. Right. Because I can't, if I get deep, I get deep like you. But you're in. You're in it. Yeah. I am. Love it. But yeah, little things like that that are really amazing because, um, I don't know. It was especially for the for the climate that we're in right now. It's nice to yeah. kind of have enlightenment. I recommend it. It's a good watch. Um, I, I think like it. I, it's on Hulu, but I don't know if it's on any other platform. But I personally so saw the it on Hector Hulu. one also. Is on Hector is this is on Hulu. I didn't see okay. it on any. I saw it on that. I'm not sure if it's on other platforms. I'm catching on to Hulu more often, but yeah, it's because this is us is on there, and I like yelling at Randall all day. Because Randall be stressing me out. I'm not gonna lie, Hulu is 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 on fire. If anybody else has Hulu, Killing Eve is a good ass show. I've heard of that. What is That's it a about? Good ass show. First of all, they have a category, maybe because they know I'm a woman, and you know how these algorithms can detect things that you like based on things you watch. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole section. I'm not sure if everybody's Hulu is, but it's called Films Made by Her. Yeah, I saw that. Made one. by Her. Okay. Yeah. So it's just oh, like a category. Account that it says Karina, and it says I think it probably knows that we're women. Yeah. Right, so it shows you everything created by women, where a woman wrote the story, or a woman directed, or a woman whatever. So a lot of those things, ironically, I enjoy. So it's <laughs> like um, Killing Eve is produced, I think, by uh, Christina Yang. Oh, <laughs> you know that's not her. That's not name. her name. <laughs> Sandra O. Oh. <laughs> Sandra O. Oh is her name. Although, shout out to Christina Yang though, because she's fire in that whole show. Yeah, and she's Ooh. no, but she's fire on Killing Eve. She's the main character. Okay, and I, it's nice to see her because I think she's a really good actress. Amazing. So, um, very, that show is very, very good. Um, okay. so I would, I would, I would recommend that for those who have Hulu. And, um, I saw another really good special and this is on Yellowstone National Park and it's a documentary on the volcano that's there. First of all, mm-hmm. I didn't even know there was a volcano there. I'm gonna admit ignorance right here. I didn't realize that this was a huge volcano we had in the middle of the country. Um, the glacier da, da, da. i forgot the name right now the i don't know it's it's about. in it's a yellowstone is in the national park people go when you look at it from like an aerial view you see that it's this huge massive mm-hmm. thing ready to destroy the planet if it erupts in and any, like, at any moment and it's like learning about it was another moment of is this one of those things that they're preparing us for <laughs> And we should learn how to be in the house because that's the situation that you got to be in the house. You, if that shit goes off, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, y'all need to watch this shit. This shit is so real. This shit is like hurricanes. What? Them shit is cookies. Okay. Yeah, like this is like, not, that's when nothing. I, when I lived in Seattle, that was one of the things I learned. When you move to different states, you'd be like, right. oh, everybody had, does have their own natural disaster prepared. And very serious ones. Serious, because Mount Rainier is ready to explode at any day. And also, Seattle's been waiting for their biggest earthquake. And I was like, what do you mean? I moved here. <laughs> what do you guys mean? You're waiting for what? No, no, we're, we're literally waiting for the day. The fault 
slips and the whole shit just crashes down wow. like it did a hundred and something years ago. Right. I said, oh, that's cute. I thought I was just, I wanted my hurricanes back when I heard the earthquake right. and the volcano that's nearby. So it's a very real thing. Yeah. The next time I hear a New Yorker complain about hurricanes down here, <laughs> I'm going to really tell them to come watch a documentary because I'm going to be like, or a snowstorm. You, it's not that like, it's your New Yorkers. I'm, I'm going to speak because it's the truth. New Yorkers are the most annoying Floridians in the planet. Like period. Yes, they, are. they can be. 100% New Yorkers are the most annoying Floridians in the planet. So it's like they, and, and this is coming from a New Yorker. I'm telling you, I, I'm takes, allowed to say this. It takes New Yorkers about 15 years to realize it ain't, it, you know. But some of them be here for 20 and they still talking shit. I'm like, yo, bro, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, my nigga, yeah. Tutaki. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So it's like, I hear about these things about hurricanes. I hate it. I hate this hurricane. I hate, yo, that is cookies on the natural disaster list. Cookies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, you can be like, you can be easily prepared. You can go into different shelters. You can, you have time. The hurricane gives you time. You have time. Time. That's the mm-hmm. beautiful thing. Time. That's different. But speaking of national parks, I've, I know a lot of people who have their passes, their national park passes. So you go to every, you can go to every one of them really easily. It's actually yeah. a great benefit. And I've heard it's fantastic. Um, I might consider doing it one day. Girl, with this lockdown, I'm thinking about all kinds of shit I want to do. I'm like, I want to visit the country. I want to see my country. Let's go, America. I've always had, no lie, I've always had um, this small affinity that I wanted to visit every 50 states before traveling outside of the country. Too late. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. But you can still see the 50 states. You can still yeah. see the 50 states. We're locked in, not, you know. Mm-hmm. I can still move around out here. The border mm-hmm. of Canada is the farthest I can go. So that's one thing. But that's a great that's a great documentary. That's also on Hulu. Also on Hulu. See? Hulu get money. Mm-hmm. Um, and before we wrap this up, anything to look forward to? I guess Looking for the coming to, weeks. Um, I think next episode we should have somebody join our conversation that lives in a different state. Okay. Just to see how the quarantine is going over there. That'd be cool. Let's then find ourselves a New Yorker who might be yeah, struggling. Because New York is in a, in a, a we're scary just talking spot. shit about them right now. But they're in a little scarier spot than some of us. I know right. the numbers have increased here. Numbers have changed out there with quarantine and cases. Um, but New York's in a tough one. Yeah. I think we, we should definitely do the little a little tri-state conversation about the tri-state area. <laughs> So um, I'll, I'll reach out to one of the homies and see if they want to like join the conversation and just give us their perspective of what it's like, you know, to, to be in that environment, the struggles or whatever. Yeah. And so yeah, so, I think that's, that's, so, that's what's coming for sure. And um, definitely we would like to talk to probably a small business owner. Yeah. I want to see how this is affecting you. I want to know um, kind of how you're feeling how are you working to make up for this? I mean, you got to think about small restaurants having to completely shift the way that they do foods and orders and those kind of things. Um, I would love to hear their perspective and how they're kind of coming about this or trying to right. go around this. Um, yeah, I think we all have been, we're very blessed in the positions we're in and a lot of us are in and some of us are not so much losing their jobs and opportunities and things going on so we would love to hear from more bless you i heard a sneeze <laughs> that's somebody in the background guys not the rona <laughs> just a sneeze not just the sneeze. rona just he's fine sneeze. he is just fine <laughs> but um, i definitely want to see how that's affecting others because you guys know how it's affecting us and we update you every week but someone else has a other great perspective for sure yeah for sure and i think that kind of wraps up this week's episode. Thank you guys yeah. for listening. Don't forget to follow me at Love Marley, L U V M A R L E Y underscore on Instagram, um, Twitter, any other social media platform. Google me. And don't forget to follow Diana at I am Diana C underscore. That's I am Diana C underscore. And I'm not even trying to act like I'm important. I'm just saying. Follow me now because my account's about to go private within the next week. So All right. follow me now because I'm I'm done. I don't really want to 
Yeah, I want to be on in private. Yeah, so um, you guys can, you know, follow me and uh, to do it before this week is up. I am Diana C. But most importantly, follow the podcast at Fresh Mondays yes. Podcast. That's at Fresh Mondays Podcast. So we can hear what you guys are thinking, what you guys are experiencing, what you guys want to hear more of us talk about while we're under quarantine here in the 2020 version of the plague and all these other things that have happened in society and in the past that people have overcome and and I was I saw this really amazing post the other day about all these accomplished people in history that maximize these life-threatening viruses that have happened in the past and while they were in quarantine they developed some of the most brilliant ideas that we still use today so it kind of inspires those of us who are in a state where we want to take this opportunity to use our creative juices to create something grand this might be a great opportunity to do so we really hope that listening to this podcast brought a little bit of happiness into your day and brought a little bit of companionship because I think that's one of the best parts of talk radio and the best parts of podcasts is that it kind of feels like somebody's there with you there with you yep so we're happy to be here with you we're happy that you guys tune in to us and if we can make this easier for anyone it is our pleasure absolutely thank you guys for listening see you guys next week